Hi carnivorous plant lovers, I'm Kate at California Carnivores and today I'm going to talk to you about Highland Nepenthes care. So I'm going to talk to you first about the temperature ranges they like, keeping up the humidity for these guys, trimming them and feeding them. So right now I have this beautiful Nepenthes burkei. Isn't that gorgeous? And it's got these great pictures on it. This is um, a Highland Nepenthes. And for our Highland Nepenthes, we like to give them temperature ranges that vary between 70 and 80 degrees. And you want a 10 degree difference, um, 10 degree temperature drop at night. They do like a little bit of a drop in temperature. Um, they need really good light. So either um, a pretty sunny windowsill, I would say um, an east to south facing window, something like that, or really good LED lights. They also need pretty good humidity. So one thing people like to do is have a mister bottle that you can put your water in and just give them a good spray every day. If, um, if that is too much for you, which I totally get, um, I have made for my home Nepenthes a nice tray with some rocks in it and it actually looks really nice. I keep some water in those rocks so that this is sitting on top of the rocks but not in the water. We don't want them sitting in the water where um, that can promote rot, but at least they're sitting where they're getting all that evaporative water and it really just kind of helps them make nice traps. So for these guys, um, for watering, it's really as simple as keeping the mix moist, but not sitting in water. So for watering, depending on um, where you're at, and you can check out uh, our other video on water quality. Um, some people have tap water that would be fine for these guys. Otherwise, you can put your um, distilled water or your rainwater in your um, cute little watering can, and literally, you can just top water it. You can get them wet, doesn't matter. Just get the mix moist, that's nice. And then for trimming these guys. So I look at it this way. The old pitchers, they're gonna start browning from the top and brown all the way down to the bottom. That's just what happens with these guys. The pitchers, they last for a while, but they don't last forever. So if it doesn't have um, some big gorgeous pitchers on here, I might, even leave something like this because the bottom of the pitcher is still eating whatever nutritious yumminess is in that pitcher and feeding the entire plant. If this plant didn't have any other beautiful pitchers, I might leave this, but since it does, I am just going to cut it off all the way at the end of the tendril at the very base of this leaf or the tip, just like that. If you have any old brown leaves, you can cut those back at the base of the vine. But um, basically, if it's browned out, I just cut it at the end of the tips here. That guy, I'll just leave because I'm gonna stick some fertilizer in there. But check it out. This is kind of the fun part. Nepenthes are vines and they get long. They grow and they just, they can get crazy. If you've looked at our collection, we have vines where it's hard to even find out which plant they belong to. This guy, he's kind of starting to grow over. With the vine, you could have this in some kind of like hanging basket or over an edge, let it vine down and have these like beautiful cascade of pictures. The other thing you could do is actually prop it up with a stake. You could just get a bamboo stake or something like you would stake up a orchid flower and literally just stick it in the pot and twist tie it to that. And that way you can have it climbing up and you have this more upright structure. So if you have any old brown leaves, you can cut those off too. These have already been cut off. And now I'm gonna fertilize him, which is very satisfying. So these are my little Osmocote pellets. We sell these in these little packets for like a dollar. This will last you forever. You could literally put um, one Osmocote pellet in each of the pitchers. You could do it once a month. You could do it every time a new pitcher opens. It's not an exact science, but look, you just take your tweezers. You can take your fingers if you're very agile. And I'm just gonna 
drop it in there. And I'm gonna go to each pitcher, feed that beautiful baby. And then I'm even gonna put it in the this sort of browning out pitcher that I left. So it can still um, dissolve our little Osmocote pellet and use it for yummy food to feed the plant, which is why I left that pitcher on there. And then that's it. This guy is ready to go back in its windowsill and grow new beautiful pictures for you.